the Denver Dynamite exploded as quarterback Mike Hold completed 12 of 21 passes for 146 yards and three touchdowns and ran for three more scores as the Dynamite downed Albany 51 to 27. Dallas is in its second season in Reno football and its first under new head coach Drew Pearson. The Texans are off to a 1-1 one -one start and have won the last three meetings against Denver. The Texans meet the Dynamite in the 50-yard indoor war next on Prime Network. presents arena football tonight from reunion arena in dallas texas the denver dynamite take on the dallas texans hello everyone i'm bill land welcome back for week number three of arena football we've got an interesting matchup tonight here in dallas as the hometown texans take on the visiting denver dynamite both teams are one and one denver's coming off a victory at home a blowout victory an impressive one 51 to 27 over albany on the other hand dallas is just a hair from being two and oh as last week the texans were upset by the expansion new orleans night right here 27 23 they were victimized by four turnovers in the game Tony Hill is back with us tonight and here in his hometown of Dallas, the one-time Cowboy wide receiver. You take a look at this league, Tony. It's its fifth year. Not a lot of tradition, some would say. But there's some bad blood, or at least I sense it, between these two teams after what happened last year. Well, I would say so. As an expansion team, Dallas beat Denver three times last year. And the last time they played was right here in Reunion Arena. And guess what? Dallas beat Denver to go to the playoffs. So, therefore, you know Denver will be really excited for this particular game. There's a contrast on the coaching sidelines tonight. First of all, for Denver Babe Pirelli, the veteran player and now coach. Of course, this is a guy who played for Bear Bryant in college and backed up Joe Willie Namath at one time, and he told us he is hungry for victory tonight. He wants to get even. Well, the one thing that Babe brings to this league is a lot of experience. This guy has been in the league for four years. He knows all the ins and outs of this league. So, therefore, you can expect some experienced things from the Denver Dynamite this year. On the flip side is an old buddy of Tony Hill's, Drew Pearson. Drew is a rookie head coach. Now, when I think of Drew Pearson as a player, I think, big play touchdowns what about as a coach what's his style gonna be well drew is also obviously a big play receiver he's a big play kind of guy he's, he's associated himself with tremendous talent he's got dick nolan as a defensive coach who's a coach of the san francisco 49ers aaron mitchell a guy we used to call am pm when he, when he played for the dallas cowboys because of, of his hitting experience they bring a lot of talent a lot of ring savvy and because of this i believe the dallas texans will perform very well this week it's an interesting matchup we hope you stay with us and enjoy it tonight in arena football here in Dallas. The Texans take on the Dynamite. We'll have more in just a moment on Prime Network. Prime Network's presentation of arena football is brought to you by Little Caesars. Two great pizzas, one low price, always, always. By Spalding, official supplier of the Ironman football. By Bike, advanced technology serving athletes worldwide. By Max Pro, the fastest growing brand of helmets in America. Tonight, Dallas will take on Denver in Arena Football. Before we get to more on tonight's game, let's take a look back at what happened in week number two of Arena Football. Last week, our game of the week on Prime Network from Detroit at Joe Lewis Arena, where Detroit wins it. 56-27, the defending champion drive, a huge performance from George LaFrance on the night. A good crowd on hand at Joe Lewis Arenas. LaFrance had five TD receptions, a new team record. He also had a six touchdown on a 56-yard missed field goal return, Detroit winning at 56-27. Tampa Bay laid it on Columbus last week in Columbus, 53 to 12. The final is the Storm wins over the Thunderbolts. The big man for Tampa Bay, their Iron Man, Lynn Bradford, for Tampa Bay as he had three touchdowns on the ground. And Tampa Bay dances to a 53 to 12 victory over Columbus. It was a home opener for Dallas, and the Texans roughed up by the New Orleans Knight, 27 to 23. Mark Mason of New Orleans, a league record 79 yards rushing. Dallas was victimized by five turnovers as quarterback Jenkins and his receivers had trouble all night hanging on to the football. Yet Dallas had an opportunity to win the football game late before this interception by Barney of New Orleans spoiled the party in Dallas, and New Orleans wins it by four. 
and Denver laid it on Albany last week in the Mile High City as the Dynamite wins 51-27. Quarterback Mike Hold had three passing touchdowns as Albany has yet to win a road game in arena football. This pass by Hold not pretty, but it gets it done as Abrams is there for the reception and Denver wins 51-27 over Albany. Last night, week number three started in the league at Orlando with its home opener, 38-32 over Columbus. Perky Walls for Orlando, five receptions, 106 yards and a touchdown. And Major Harris for Columbus in his debut in the league came on in the second half with Columbus down 29-13. Helped close the gap, but Orlando takes care of Columbus, 38-32. We're up to date in Arena Football. We'll be back with more from Denver and Dallas tonight here in Dallas in just a moment. In Arena in Dallas, Texas, the Texans will receive the kickoff here to start the football game. Rusty Fricky tees it up at the goal line here in the 50-yard indoor war for Denver. And we're ready to go. Bill landed Tony Hill with you. Kenny is deep. He takes it off the nets. To the five, wrapped up and brought down at the seven-yard line as Long makes the tackle. The quarterback, Alfred Jenkins from Arizona to lead the Texans. Mitchell Ward, a very popular guy here, returning from last year's club and running back. Wideouts, Carl Akins, an excellent receiver out of Northern Illinois. Sam Moore is a big playmaker, an all-league performer. Kenny, who just returned the kickoff, sets up also as a wideout. And Gary Costar lines up on the line with a tight end. We'll have the other two linemen for you in just a moment. It is first and ten. The ball on the seven-yard line for the Texans here to open things up in arena football tonight. Man in motion is Kenny. Jenkins. Pumps. Got his man, Kenny. Short of the first down, his forward motion stopped around the 14. The other offensive line members meet Frank Denard. And he's a big one. And Jeff Hurd out of Kansas State joins him. We'll take a look at the defensive starters for the Dynamite. Norris, March, Freeman, Schutz, Foreman, and Coffey. And, of course, in arena football, almost everyone goes every way. There are some defensive specialists. Long is one of those, a DB out of BYU. And Alvin Williams from Texas Southern back in his home state playing for the visiting Dynamite. Third down, rather second and two. And this one is complete for the first down at the 20-yard line. Williams makes the tackle, but not before Moore. Sam Moore out of Sam Houston State makes the reception, and it's first and ten for the Texans. And Moore is a guy who says, nobody can handle me when I'm healthy. And take a look at those numbers after two games. You can see why. Well, right now, Sam Moore ran a simple sideline pattern. He ran about ten yards, broke to the sideline. It's a play that Drew has ran many times, or Coach Pearson has ran many times with the Dallas Cowboys for first downs. It's called a sideline round. A great execution. What a chance to visit with Drew Pearson in halftime, so stay tuned for that. You'll find out his impressions of arena football after two weeks into the season. Saw the numbers on Jenkins, first and ten from the 20. Jenkins under pressure, got a man wide open. Touchdown, Texans! Boy, that was a great execution by Jeff. He made an excellent fake. Aikens is wide open during the middle. Great play. Well, it doesn't take long. 12.56 remaining in the first period, and Dallas goes up top early. Here it is, a fake handoff. He rolls to the right. Akins breaks to the post pattern. The safety bit for the for the run, and as a result, it was a touchdown. Six points. And look at Jenkson right, right here. Do you think he enjoyed that pass? One of the things Babe Pirelli told us, the coach of Denver, that he likes about the opposing quarterback is his ability to take pressure. He took at that time his shoots was on top of him. Fumbled snap, but the kick is up. It is no good. And do we have a flag on the play? No, sir. All right. Just the same. Dallas with a 6-0 lead. 12-24 remaining in the first period. Back with a kickoff in just a moment here on Prime Network. In a pro football league that throws the football 70% of the time, having the best throwing football available is critical. That's why Arena Football has switched to the outstanding new Spalding Ironman football. The Spalding Ironman features an innovative new spiral balance system that counterweights the lace, assuring a perfect spiral when properly thrown. Spalding is proud to be the official football of Arena Football, the 50-yard indoor war. Throw a perfect pass with the Spalding Ironman football. See, and the deep man, Coffee, off his pads, and it comes back up. 
Denver lucky to not fumble the football as coming up with it then off the rebound was Alvin Williams. He was tackled on the play by Jenkins and Ward deep in their own territory for Denver to start up with quarterback Mike Hold who threw for three and scored three last week. He's joined with the wideouts and running back Marshall Foreman from Houston. Defensive back also wideout Wayne Coffey. Fred Doucette, an outstanding player out of Wyoming. And shoots from Florida State, who is a good Ironman player going both ways. First and ten from the five. Man in motion, Coffey. No time for the quarterback, though, as Hold is brought down at the one-yard line by Frank Denard. Well, Frank Denard's some player. He's got a he's got a heck of a story behind him. Here, we'll get a chance to take a look at Frank Denard making this play. He just beats the man straight up front. His straight-out power move, he over, overpowers the center and makes the play. But old Frank Denard, they call Meat, the youngest and the heaviest player on their team. And he's a guy in training camp. He ordered 10 pizzas, six for himself and four for his teammates. You think he likes to eat? For the week or the night? <laughs> for the afternoon. <laughs> Second down and 14, the ball on the one yard line. Hold. Back to pass. Intercepted Dallas. Touchdown, Texans. Mark Jackson. Boy, Hold had a lot of time on that play. Jackson's a great defensive back for Dallas. He's their, he's their big hitter on their ball club. They're playing a zone. Hold threw right to Mark Jackson, to Jackson in that particular play. Mark made a great play. Jackson's first interception of the year, and Dallas strikes like lightning here. Drew Pearson's got to be happy. It is 12 zip with 10.47 to go in the period. Now look at that Dallas sideline. Now power comes back on for the point after attempt. And this one is good. Power. Now just two of seven on the year, but it's Dallas night so far. We'll take a look at this play again from down on the field as Hold in his own end zone, Tony. Yeah, Hold is dropping, dropping back. He's, Dallas is in a zone. Hold throws right into the strength of the defense. Mark Jackson was standing right there in the corner spot. Here you get a chance to look at it. Here's a crossing route, and here comes Jackson from his zone spot and makes the play. Gets up and rolls into the end zone. Great play by Mark Jackson. Dallas, I was talking to Coach, Coach Nolan. He said they're going to use multiple defenses, a lot of man-to-man -man and a lot of zone to keep him off guard. There's a look at Aaron Mitchell, the guy we called AMPM, and he was known for that because of the way he used to hit guys on the football field. He'd put you out. Well, he's got to be happy as the whole coaching staff. Jackson, a nine-yard interception return. The kickoff will come back out and be first down and 10 at the five-yard line on the touchback. In arena football, remember, there is no punting in this game. The nets are in play. The sideline wall is in play as long as you keep your feet in bounds. Now the remainder for the offensive line for Denver, John Norris and Mike Freeman. Freeman, a veteran, played in the NFL with the Denver Broncos, part of two Super Bowl teams, Joe March out of Murray State. First and 10, the ball on the five for the Dynamite, down 13 zip in the early going. Keep it on the ground, nice run out across the 10-yard line as Marshall Foreman out of Arkansas and Meet Denard and Jeff Hurd make the tackle. There's the starting Lineup for the Texans defensively with Hurd, Denard, co-star Moore, Ward, and Akins. The specialist on the defensive end for Drew Pearson's group, Jeff Jenkins, a defensive back out of Utah. And Mark Jackson, who had the interception for the TD of nine yards a moment ago. 9.38. Here's hold on the season, 22 of 47. Thrown for four, been intercepted twice. Incomplete. And another thing to remember is you see those walls there. A ball thrown off the wall is live and in play as long as you receive it in bounds and as long as the ball hasn't bounced first. But when it comes off the ball full flush, it is a, a live ball and free game. Clock moves in indoor football until the final minute of the first half and final minute of the ball game and also keeps moving after a touchdown. Doesn't stop until after the extra point. Third down and five for the Dynamite. Man in motion is Doucette. Hold. Going broke. 
just out of the reach of a sprinting Wayne Coffey covered by Carl Akins, but Coffey really turned it on. He's back at his home state out of Southwest Texas State. Not a bad throw by Holden. Well, they had a great a great situation there. Coffey ran a post takeoff route. So what, what I mean is that he broke to the middle of the field and he just took off straight down the field and the quarterback, Mike Holden, just laid the ball up just a little too far. It could have been a touchdown. Here is Rusty Fricky to come on for the field goal attempt, three of six for the year. And of course, in this case, you're talking mostly return. 57 yard attempt. A little bit short, be taken by Kenny. To the five, 10, 15, and brought down. Nice return by Kenny, though, out to the 18 yard line of the Texans. And generally, statistically, the field, basically, and everything in arena football is one half of regular football, and you can do the same when a guy gets a nice return like that of 23 yards. It's like a 46-yarder. Well, here's a look at it right here. Atron, the kick is the kick is over meets Frank Denard, and and uh, as a result, uh, good field position. One of the key things that Coach Pearson was concerned about Atron Kennedy was was holding on the ball. Uh, last week, the first four times he touched the ball, he fumbled it. And I guess this would be a great time to get those butterflies after system. Dallas had five fumbles, lost three of them last week against New Orleans. First down and 10 to Moore, and he takes it out to the 23 and a half yard line before Alvin Williams and Bart Schutz make the tackle for the Denver Dynamite. The Dynamite and the Texans, one and one coming in here. Well, we got a lot of stories to tell you. Alvin Williams, when he first reported at training camp, stood up and said he wanted to be named Abdul. Alvin Abdul Williams on that play, folks. And uh, as long as he makes tackles like that, they'll say, fine, you can be called whatever you want. Babe Pirelli, an interesting sort, and that gives these guys a free reign. They say he's a big player. 13 zip, seven minutes to go, first quarter. Dallas with the ball in the lead, second possession. And no room that time at all for the Gary Costar, the tight end on the end of round, as Coffey and Schutz make the tackle. They here they go. They tried a misdirection play and didn't fool anybody. As a result, great defense by Denver. Co-star out of Texas A&M. Look at Drew Pearson. One of the things Coach Pearson said he may use tonight is a little shotgun, as you saw Denver use early in the game, where the quarterback will step back in the shotgun and throw the ball. It's somewhat unusual in this league. And Denver will use it occasionally as well. Third down and eight. The ball at the 21. Kenny in motion. Jenkins got his man. First down and yes. Whoa. made the tackle on the receiver, Aikens, who scored the touchdown a few minutes ago. And the Texans keep possession. Aikens runs a 10-yard curl. Coffee makes a great tackle. And sometimes the sideline may not be a receiver's best friend. Here you go. Aikens with a curl route, 10-yard hook. Boom, into the sideline. Or into the wall, as we might say. Aikens came into the game with six receptions. Got two already, including one for a score tonight. Look at Jenkins red hot. It's hit his first five. Out of Arizona. Had a couple of tryouts with some NFL teams. Washington, San Francisco, and Phoenix. First and ten from the 21. Taken by Kenny. Stays in bounds. And he takes it all the way down to the 13. Mega the 12-yard line of Denver, where Abraham and Long combined to make the stop on Kenny. Here, the Texans are, are thrown underneath. Kenny runs a, a short sideline from the inside slot position. But one of the things is he's going to learn very soon in this league that you must go north and south because you won't gain any yards and you may get a headache running across field in this league. Atron Kenny, a guy who's got eight receptions coming in. Uh, a player who was injured a lot last year, just one reception in the regular season, but showed his stuff in the Arena Bowl where he caught five passes in the Dallas loss to Detroit. Detroit winning its third straight title. Jenkins now six of six. Second down and two. Complete touchdown, Texans co-star. Great play. Here's a great play. The Texans ran a what you call a tight end delay or a tight end screen. They fake the run. The tight end blocks down, and then he comes out the backfield wide open. Co-star stretches out for the touchdown. Coffee was completely fooled by the handoff. You don't see many tosses to the tight end because when that guy leaves, it opens up a free lane for the linebacker. But Dallas was able to use it and use it well. And on the board again, 19 zip. Power for the point after. It is good. And wow, the 
Texas 19. Dynamite nothing with 4.08 to go in the first period. Stick around, it can turn around in a hurry. 20 zip Dallas. All American, one company with a single focus on football. All American is able to keep in sharp focus our three goals to provide the very best at reconditioning service. Action. Everybody bites, tight end fakes, comes out on a roll pattern. Great play, great execution. Coach Pearson, Coach, Coach Pearson, as you can see, is using a lot of play action for whatever reason it may be, but he's been very effective with it. And waste any time either. Just 341, five plays, 32 yards. Jenkins, a 12-yarder to cap it off. Their opening drive, three plays, 43 yards. And an interception returned by Jackson in between two Jenkins TD passes. It's all Dallas, 20-0. Dynamite to receive with 4.08 to go in the first. Power set to kick it off. And Coffee again, the deep man for the Dynamite. Boy, they need to get something going here in a hurry. On the bounce, and Coffee, they have to wait to allow him to receive it. Got by that horde of tacklers, the 15, 20, 20 of Dallas, and brought down inside the 10 yard line. Oh, mama, hold on, is Coffee a sensational return brought down by Sloan Hood? That's what you call making up for a mistake. Coffee was out of place on that touchdown, but here he gets a second chance to show what he can do, and he returns this ball almost for a touchdown. Here he comes down the sideline. He's got Aikens one-on-one, -on -one and he gives him a fake cut across field, and he's on his way. And here's the kicker to make the play. When Dallas had to hold up and wait for him to make that reception, it's like their momentum stopped, and once he got by the first wave, there was very little to stop it. Well, there's that five-yard line of scrimmage where they cannot go past. First down and goal to go from the nine. Man in motion is Abraham. Pitch out goes to Cannon. And Cannon is stuffed as this Dallas crowd gets into it. Allen Roulette just signed a few days ago out of East Texas State and makes the tackle. But Denver right now is running a powerhouse sweep. They're sending everybody to the left side and Cannon is just following the blocking. One of the weaknesses Dallas had last week was stopping the run. And I'm sure Denver saw those game films. Now Mason of New Orleans set a league rushing record against Dallas last week. And, but overall, defensively, Dallas shows very well and leads in a number of categories in the league stats. Hold on the keep, and he takes it down inside the five-yard line. And speaking of running the football, Mike Hold is a guy who you wouldn't think a quarterback, but there's the league leaders. He's second in the league at 71 yards. What's really impressive, Tony, is better than five yards of carry in this league is something. Oh, excellent carry. One of Dallas's major objectives as far as de defending against Denver is to stop Hold and control their running game. And Hold is the guy to go to. Coach says that this guy is the best athlete on their ball club. Now he even could do some drop kicking if necessary. That's right. Hold out of South Carolina. He's got some coaching experience as a grad assistant South Carolina. Keeps the football. Is he in? Yes. It is a touchdown for the Dynamite. Boy, Hold shows a lot of experience, a lot of ring savvy on this play. He just waits for the play to, do, to fold, and he just follows the blocking. Mike Hold, 6-foot, 190-pounder, takes it in himself. It's almost like a quarterback keeper. Well, it is a quarterback keeper where he just hesitates a second, then he just takes off towards the end zone. And we've had four touchdowns here in the first quarter alone at 146 and counting right now. Fricky on for the point after seven of eight this season. Good again, makes an eight of nine on the year. Hits his first one tonight. So Denver's on the board. Texans still lead it comfortably 20 to seven. Back with more in arena football in just a moment. Job. He takes a hesitate, takes it one step back, and just follows that blocking. Great run, great blocking. Mike Hold played some in the NFL with Tampa Bay back in 87. Veteran player and an experience in any league means something, maybe even more so in this league where there's some strategies of the game that the first year folks just may not recognize. And a guy like Hold to run your ball club is a real asset, even though Jenkins has shown a wealth of talent tonight out of Arizona playing for. Dallas. Now, Holt is a guy who played for the Texans in their exhibition game in Paris last November as Ben Bennett couldn't make the trip. Here's the kickoff. Kenny for the Texans with a fumble and recovered by Jeff Jenkins for Dallas. They'll get it first and ten on their own five-yard line. 
Take a look at the scoring drive for Denver after Cannon with the tackle of Jenkins. Three plays, nine yards after the great return and hold for the four-yard score. The one thing Atron's got to work on is that's concentration. He's got a lot of talent. He's a game breaker, but he's got to he's got to learn how to hold on to that ball. And Jenkins, talk about hot. Six of six for 68 and two scores. Well, right now, you can't have a better day, but this, the game is quite early in this league. As you know, you can score in a, in a second. Dallas with the lead of the ball. And nothing doing on a first and ten play from their own five-yard line as Cannon and Smith make the tackle for Denver on the play. Bottom line on this play, Jenkins didn't get the ball clean. He may have been looking downfield a little premature before, before getting the ball. Second down and 13 for Jenkins. Out of the University of Arizona. And some folks here in Dallas are saying Ben Bennett has been re-signed by the team after a tour in the World League this summer. And they're saying, why hasn't he been activated? Why isn't he playing? Well, after you've watched the first quarter tonight, that question is not asked anymore. Jenkins, red hot, trying to avoid the tackle in the end zone. Gets it off. Intercepted by Denver for the 25, for the 20, and knocked out of bounds with the official going down. Troy Long with the INT. Boy, you should have seen that hit. Jenkins trips on the corner on the, on the running back's foot. He throws off his bad foot, off his left foot, going to the left. Here it is. He throws off his bat, his back foot, and and a great interception over there. He comes down there. This is why they call this arena football. Watch this hit. In this league, you either get hit or you hit somebody. And that's why they, that's why they call this a 50-yard indoor war. And Drew Pearson, watch out over there. Excuse me. I wonder does Drew miss those kind of hits. <laughs> and back to live action as Denver comes right back to the air game. Doucette, it's incomplete. Jackson was recovering on the first and 10 from the 19. And that is the end of the first quarter. Mama, you talk about action. We have had it here. <laughs> Texans with a 20 to 7 lead back with a second quarter on Prime Network. Texans on top 20 to 7 after the first period. Bill Land and Tony Hill with you here at a reunion arena. The offense, well, all Dallas, 72 to 12 total yards in the first period. Denver with a football, though. Second down and 10 from the 19, and just unloading it in time was a quarterback hold. Harris covering. Well, that's a gutsy play by hold. That shows a lot of ring savvy, a lot of experience. For him just to be able to throw this pass is unbelievable. Watch me. Great defense by, by da da Dallas, and Holden makes a great play. Great play, pass to Bart shoots. Here it is. He gets ready to throw the ball. Boom, he can't get it off. As a result, he throws the shoots. He makes a great catch, but it really is just great individual talent by, by Hold. We told you Hold with the great rushing numbers on the year, but struggling with the passing game tonight. One of five and already an interception that went for TD the other way. Had bounced off a helmet. Hold can't hang on. They've called the play dead, though. The play has been whistled as an incomplete pass. Roulette, newcomer, recovering the football. Ward is the one that knocked it away, I believe. Watch it. And here comes Ward on a blitz. And he, he read that screen all the way. They call Ward Ninja Turtle. He may be the most popular guy in the stadium over here. He's built like a little tank. He's strong as an ox, and he's just a tough ball player. The Ninja Turtle. Well, Dallas taking advantage of one turnover for a touchdown tonight, trying to create another one. Here is Rusty Fricky, who missed earlier on a 57-yarder. And he comes on here now for a 32-yard attempt with the 7-8 yard end zone. Fricky certainly long enough, but it is no good. So Denver misses on the field goal attempt. and certainly a makeable one. And Dallas will get the football first and 10 again with a 20 to 7 lead as we open play here in the second quarter. Yeah, Denver's got to get Denver's got to get points out of this. They've got a, a great kickers on both teams. Vicky's got a, he's an excellent kicker. Matter of fact, they're the top two kickers in the league. See Fricky with 16 points and Power with 13 for Dallas. And uh, Babe Pirelli says that Fricky's been looked at by a lot of teams in the National Football League, and he said, if anything, he kicks too high for this league with the scoreboards being an obstacle. He said, uh, but for his NFL future, he said, that certainly bodes well. First and 10 for the Texans from their own 20-yard line. Jenkins in motion. And Jenkins in 
incomplete. Sam Moore going off without the football and knows he might have had six. Williams was covered. Well, that's what you call running without the ball. Great pass by Jenkins. Great timing. Here's a bad place to catch a ball in your hands. That ball is perfectly thrown. Great play, and Moore just took his eyes off the ball. He was running before he caught it. That's an omen. That's a, one of the worst things you can do as a wide receiver, run without the ball. Alfred Jenkins still having a great night, 7 of 9 for 77 yards. Jenkins coming in on the year with just three touchdown passes and got two in the first quarter here tonight. Well, they got an interesting situation in this game. Alfred Jenkins will probably have an opportunity to throw to his brother, Jeff Jenkins. Timeout has been called. Babe Pirelli upset about something. We'll figure it out and tell you about it in just a moment. Yeah. Telecast on Prime Network is next Friday, 8 o'clock Eastern, the Detroit Drive going for the Fort Pete. And the Orlando Predators. The Predators lost to the drive just a week ago in Detroit, but Orlando bounced back with a victory here in week number three last night. Had a crowd of over 9,000 for their home opener for the expansion team down in Orlando, and they're expecting another big night when the drive comes to Florida. There's Drew Pearson has uh, got things going here. Babe Pirelli, I'm not sure what he was upset about, Tony, as he had mentioned to us before the game that he thought Dallas did a few things illegally defensively. There's some things that uh, regular football doesn't have that arena ball does have with its rules, and he thought Dallas stretched those somewhat. He was going to call that to the attention of the officials. But Dallas is on offense now, and I'm not sure what he was worried about. And now the officials checking out some problem here. Well, one of the things that we must Three emphasize. Seven. Second down and 10 for Dallas. 12.47 to go in the half. And fumbling the football out of bounds as unable to hold on was Mitchell Ward. Norris there covering on the play for the Dynamite. Here we want to bring something to your attention. Here, here the Ninja Turtle Award fumbles the ball, but if that ball would have, had not touched the ground and hit the wall and came back and this guy made this catch, that would have been a good play. Yeah, it would have been legal, and uh, Ward is a guy who last year led the league in rushing with 185 yards and led the league in touchdowns on the ground with seven. Mitchell Ward out of Southwest Texas State. Third down and 10 from the 20 for the Texans. Installed so far, Jenkins. Complete for the first down into Denver territory near the 17. Making the grab, Jeff Jenkins out of Utah. And get this, those are the brother tandem I spoke about earlier. Alfred Jenkins to Jeff Jenkins. Here Jenkins gets a little pressure. He stands tall in the pocket, makes a great throw. Here you'll see Jenkins standing in the pocket, throwing to his brother on a sideline route. Great concentration, great hands. They talk very highly about him when I say they. Coach Nolan, Coach Pearson, Coach Mitchell, they think he's the best or the smartest athlete on their squad. And Jeff Jenkins, I'm referring to. Certainly they ought to know each other well enough. First down and 10. Ball at the 16. And Jenkins incomplete. Mix up there on the pattern looking for another newcomer as Alexander, Craig Alexander out of University of Houston covering. You're looking at coffee. Drew Pearson a word now with his quarterback, Alfred Jenkins. Well, there must be something interesting. As you've, we've noticed, they have run square outs or sideline patterns consistently, up, moving it up and down the field. And maybe they must, Drew must have seen something that we haven't seen as far as those cornerbacks are concerned. Den Denver's a team that has given up 177 yards a game in total offense. Dallas leads the league in defense in giving up 166 yards per ball game. Second down and 10 for the Texans, leading it by 14, and flags are thrown. And it has been a relatively penalty-free game so far. Last week here, the Texans had Denard thrown out of the contest. 65 offense. Against the Texans, they'll march it back. And a second Three and 15 or 13 now from the 20-yard line of Denver. Yeah, that was a two-and-a-half-yard penalty right there. Everything in this game is cut in half. It would ordinarily be a five-yard penalty in regular ball or standard ball. It's two and a half or half the distance in arena football. 10.25 to go. First half, Dallas scored three quick times before Denver got on the board on a whole four-yard run. Texans up by 14. Jenkins in trouble. Got away from one man. Flag thrown to the 15, the 10, 5. 
down near the one yard line. Let's wait to see about the penalty flag though as Williams finally made the tackle on the quarterback Jenkins and man what an athlete he is. 44. There's the preliminary call. It'll come back. Yeah, generally when you got generally when you have that much time there's always someone holding. Here's a look at Ward. Ward Ward holds and throws him down I guess and they made the play on there. That's a questionable call. Jenkins shows a little bit of footwork a little nifty footwork there. Holding. Down. That's one of the things you always have to worry about when a quarterback has that much time. The linemen, the defense, the running backs, they have no idea where he is, and it's very difficult for them to keep a man or sustain a guy's contact for a, a, a certain amount of time. The penalties two on Dallas now tonight, and this one a costly one, certainly, as they'd had first and goal to go at the one yard line. Instead, it is third down and 18, the ball at midfield at the 25 here at Reunion Arena in Dallas. Good crowd on hand. Jenkins in trouble shows his mobility as Mark's trying to bring him down and he put it up for grabs nearly picked off by coffee down there as well as long who had one earlier but Jenkins shows the ability to move around and you've just got to be a great athlete at the quarterback spot. Yeah, he is. He's a, he's a big strong quarterback. He's under a lot of pressure. And they're going to Dallas is going to have to improve in that area and Jenkins is going to have to improve on his throwing this one. He might wish he could have kept because he's throwing it up for grabs and it's anybody's ball. That was one of Dallas' biggest concerns also early in the game is turnovers. Last week they had four, six turnovers, four by one particular player. And they've got to improve in that area if they want to win. 41-yard attempt coming up for Jim Power. See what he's done on the year. Dallas with a 27 lead, trying to tack on three more. 41-yarder, coffee deep in case it doesn't make it. Ah, uh -uh, it's good. That's just a nine-foot area width to work with as Power. Puts it home and tack on three more for the Texans. They lead it 23 to 7. Kickoff coming up in a moment on Prime Network. Earl Campbell, his guided Rafael Septien, Efren Herrera, the Zendejas brothers, a great list of players, and Jim Powers fits right in that group. And understand here, with just nine feet width, that's half of what regular football has in the NFL, and it's five feet higher. The crossbar is 15 feet, whereas in the NFL it's 10. This one off the nets to Coffee for Denver. For the five, 10, follows his blockers well and takes it out to the 15-yard line. Costar, Gary Costar makes the tackle. There's the Texan scoring drive. Six plays, only six yards. Stall, but power connects from 41 yards out. And the Texans with a 23 to 7 lead now. They jumped off 20 to nothing on Aikens 30 yard TD reception from Jenkins. Jackson's with an interception return of nine yards. Costar took one in from 12 yards on a pass from Jenkins making a 20 zip and then hold came back on a four yard run and power counters for Dallas leading it 23 to 7. Man in motion is due set for the dynamite. Hold in trouble. Bought some time. Going for deuce set and overthrown. Covering on the play was Jeff Jenkins. Putting the heat on was Costar. Yeah. There's Costar. Hold had a man down the sideline. You'll see number 27 all of a sudden just break to the open, break open, but he just didn't get an opportunity to get it to him. A lot of lot of pressure on hold. Right now, Denver needs to get something going. They need to establish some type of game plan. Either it be rushing or, or passing the ball short just to establish the game plan. The veteran player Wayne Coffey did a nice job with a kick return to set things up and overall doing well in the league behind the Nat from Orlando Smith and Banks from Columbus Coffey third in the league averaging 17 yards per return. Man in motion is shoots hold on second and 10 gets it off and it is complete to the 10 the 5 and touchdown Denver the dynamite with Marshall Foreman out of the back with a score. We call this play a throwback. The quarterback fakes one way, rolls to the opposite way, and then throws it back. Here's a look at it. You see, you see Foreman break out the backfield. He looks downfield. Foreman is all by himself. He just starts down the field. Easy touchdown. And Foreman's got a little background on himself. You know who he is. Uh, he's the cousin of the great boxer George Foreman. And what's scary is he likes to spar with him. He's <laughs> only 5'10", 197. Here's Fricky for the point after, and it is wide to the left. No good. Well, Foreman wanted me to let everyone know that his family was coming down, and he just wanted to say hi to him, and, and he's going to have a great game for him, he felt. And here he is. He gets a, a long touchdown right there. There's Marshall Foreman. Makes his home in Houston and uh, says, yeah, in the spare time, I'll go a few rounds with George. He wants to be a boxer eventually. That's right. 
Here he is, great concentration. Watch that catch, good footwork. He stays in, the, stays in bounds and he easily struts in for the easy six. Foreman, 35-yard reception from Hold and Denver. Not about to quit, not with 6.58 to go in the half. Makes it a 23 to 13 ball game. And this game really is one that isn't over until the final seconds because anything can happen. You can score from any place on the field. Interception returns for touchdowns like we've seen tonight are not a rarity in this league. Oh no, Babe really is a, you know, he's an old vet in this league. He knows all the ins and outs and you can, you can believe that Denver will not fold. They'll come back and they'll make this again. Three thirteen, and Denver to kick it off now with Fricky on the bounce. That is Jenkins. Jeff to the five, got by a man. 15-20, got by Coffee to the 25, and a great return by Jenkins. Coffee finally hugged him and brought him down at the 22-yard line of the Dynamite. Boy, there's something about that number I like. I don't know what it is. If it's Jenkins or it's just number 8-0. Wouldn't have been your number. Oh, of course not. My memory serves me right. There no. it is. They say Jenkins is a, one of the smartest and the best athlete on the team. And here he is. He gives a little move, a wrinkle move. And I bet he wish he didn't have that tail on the side of him. <laughs> it's a great offensive effort by Jenkins. He, wells, he wears that number real well. Yeah, he's not bringing any shame to it tonight, Tony. I'll be proud. 6.27 to go here in the half. 23-13. Dynamite on the short side. Texans want more. There's Jenkins to Jenkins again, taking it down to almost the 15-yard line. Troy Long makes the tackle. A moment ago, Denver taking just two plays and going 35 yards, and Hold getting all of it to Foreman for 35 yards in the score, requiring 143. And here's out for Jenkins. Quick conversation with the head coach, Drew Pearson. Dallas already approaching the century mark in the passing game. Jenkins coming in at 339 on the year for two games, so averaging just over 165 yards per game and having a great night. Flag stop play. Wait and find out what the call is. I think it's against Denver. Legal formation. Mack in the neutral zone. On a defense. There's the illegal defense. The call against the Denver Dynamite, the illegal formation. See if we can pick it up, Tony. What it is, we find, see 33 in the screen. He's in the neutral zone. You got to be four yards off the ball. The linebackers must line up four yards behind the guard of the tackle or the down lineman. And he cannot drop back no more than four yards or four yards four yards on the width of the, of the guard. There's an imaginary box at which your linebackers must stay within. And you cannot uh, approach that line, as he mentioned. First and 10 from the 12. Jenkins complete. And I think that sidelines your friend. No way, Sam Moore, as he got wrestled down finally. Williams and Adams in on the play. But it'll come back, holding the call on Frank Denard out of Arkansas State. That could have been maybe one too many pizzas over there. <laughs> Here they are, they're just blitzing, coming straight out at him. And, and as a result, Jenkins is just not getting enough time to throw the ball. You think Denard maybe got confused, thought he was on defense, that's why he tackled <laughs> that lineman? I'll tell you what, he's supposed to be a great defensive player. This guy ran a 5'140 at 320 pounds. Now that's exceptional. Just go out and try it someday. You think you're in pretty good shape, you 200 pounders, you 180 pounders. Just go out there and bring out the stopwatch and run that 40 and see how quick it takes you, or how long it takes you, and then you'll have some respect for Denard and his speed. Second down and 15 from the 17. Jenkins. Just off the fingertips of the man, his brother Jeff, as Troy Long was covering on the play. There's an interesting story. These guys are roommates. Jenkins and Jenkins. We might hear a lot about this during the, during the year. Here it is. Jenkins runs a simple post pattern. Alfred lays it up to his brother Jeff and just out of just just right outside of his hands. Great effort. He stretches out for it. Great coverage. Now that's what you call sacrifice. And in arena football, you either hit someone or you get hit. But the big thing in this league is these guys love this game. They're not playing for the money. They're playing for the enjoyment and also opportunity to maybe go to the big leagues or, or, or a higher league. I think we sacrificed a cameraman on that play. We'll see if he's alive and well. One for the team. Third and 13. Jenkins again. Incomplete. Hammered from behind was Sam Moore. He didn't like the non-call. And the official in the middle of it is Alvin Williams. Abdullah 
<laughs> making sure you get his name right. Well, he made a great play there. I mean, you better make sure you get his name right. He was all over more on that particular play. It was great timing by Jenkins, but more. But Williams is right there. Here you get a look at it. Jenkins takes a five-step five-step drop. He throws the ball, and there's Moore, who, who misses the ball, and Jenkins is right there to make the play. The fans don't like it either. Yeah, and understand here at Reunion Arena, the crowd sees it like you do in your living room on the big screen up here on the scoreboard, so they react to every replay. And the field goal unit will come on. It's a 33-yarder for the Texans' power. Hit the last one from 41. This one wide right. That's a live ball off the net. Flag is thrown as coffee on the return, scrambling. And finally brought down around the eight-yard line. That coffee looks like a player. He's got a lot of moves out there. Yeah, he, he did a great job, a heck of a job, just to get seven yards. Five yard violation. Five-yard violation on the kicking correct. team. You must allow them that five yards to make the reception off of the nets. And Babe Pirelli. Look at his look at his playlist. Going. That's right, Denver. Hey, as much Dallas as this game has been, Denver's a score away from being right back in the thick of things, just down by 10 right now, 23-13. It's what I like about this sport. The turnout, incomplete. Jackson covering on the play, intended for Cedric Tillman. There's Jackson, who's already returned one interception for a score tonight. Well, it looks like Denver has retreated to, to the short pass to give Holt a little bit of time to try to establish a game plan. Coach Perilli calls all the players from the sideline, unlike a couple of games we've watched in the, in the past week. Hold brings him out on second down and 10. He is 2 of 9 for a score and an interception thrown for 37 yards. Ball on the dynamite 7 from his end zone. Got a man. Oh, he turned around and couldn't hang on. As Jackson and Hood were coming down strong on the intended receiver for Denver. Yeah, I tell you what, Fred Deuce had had an opportunity to catch this ball right in his hands. It might have been a, an a, 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 one of the elements of the footsteps he heard because he had that ball in his hands. And he's looking downfield and doesn't, have, doesn't hold on to the ball. Jackson and Hood wanted to make a sandwich of it. Babe Pirelli's dynamite faced with a third and ten now. Ball on the seven. 23-13 Texans. 2.03 to go first half. Clock stops with a minute to go in the half on dead balls then. And penalties. Hold. In trouble. Nearly sacked. Brought down. Out of the end zone at the one-yard line. Oh, mama, what a play by Co-Star and Buddy Wyatt. Boy, I tell you, Hold did a great job just to get back to the line of scrimmage or to the one-yard line. Costa beat his man right off the ball, and Wyatt came to clean it up. Here's a good look at it. He steps up. Here comes Costa from the top, and there's Wyatt right there to make the play. Wyatt out of TCU, Costa out of Texas A&M. 123 and counting. The long, long field goal attempt by Fricky, out of play. And by the way, first time view of Arena Football. That ball in the stands is the fans. You keep them here. You catch it, you get it. So it'll be a first and ten for Dallas on its own five-yard line. We'll take a brief timeout. Stay with us here on Prime Network Arena Football. Dallas on top of the Denver Dynamite, 23 to 13. In a pro foot Prime Network and Arena Football. Bill Land and Tony Hill with you at Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas. A hometown Texans with a ten-point lead. Over the visitors from Denver. The dynamite on the short side. Dallas with the football here when we resume action with 1.13 to go in the half. And do remind you that when we get to that minute mark, the clock will stop on incomplete passes and penalties. Does not stop any other time other than the final minute of the half, the final minute of the ball game. It is fast and furious here in the 50-yard indoor war. This one slow to develop as the officials hold things up for a moment. Dallas has three timeouts. Denver has two left. Timeout situation. Dallas with three. Denver with two on the one-minute warning. And the one-minute warning, the clock stops on every play when you get down to one minute. Unlike in the NFL, in two minutes, it stops when there's an incomplete pass or a run out of bounds. The play stops on every ball, unless the guy's not trying to get any progress or get a first down. Am I correct? Yes, sir. 
you aren't trying to make progress offensively as a team, they'll penalize you. On the first down and 10, it is complete for the first down. Moore drags Williams with him out of bounds. Sam Moore out of Sam Houston State. He had 33 receptions a year ago for 446 yards and five TDs. Boy, Sam Moore is a big wide receiver over there. He's kind of, you look at, you look at Alvin Williams, look at, you look at Moore and you say, wow, how can I have to cover a guy this size? And Moore came in here with 17 grabs in the first two ball games. First and 10 from the 16. Jenkins. And no flag in the end zone. Intended for Aikens. Tillman and Long were covering. Said it was an uncatchable ball. As a result, no penalty. Here's a look at the play. Jenkins sets up. He sees Aikens going down the middle. He lays it up. Just out the outstretched arms. Matter of fact, it was an opportunity for him to catch the ball. That's one of the things Coach Pearson is trying to work with, uh, with uh, um, Jenkins over there, trying to throw in a condensed field. He's not used to throwing in such a, a condensed situation. 46.7 seconds to go in the half. As you look at Jenkins' first half numbers, great first half with 100 yard, nine yards throwing. Going for the bomb again, and this one is incomplete. And there's a perfect example. Coach Pearson said they worked all week long on throwing deep passes. He's got a habit of throwing them too far just out the league, giving the guy time to run under it. Once he can get that under, once he gets that under control, he thinks Coach Pearson thinks this guy's going to be a great player in this league. He's backed up tonight by Mickey Russell out of Angelo State. Ben Bennett is still on the inactive list, as Pearson indicated. The Bennett is yet to grasp the offense to his liking. Bennett coming off of the World League of American Football and a former MVP in this league. And a guy is certainly a favorite here in Dallas for his heroics last year, leading the expansion Texans to the championship game before falling. Third down and 10 from the 16. Got his man. That's Aikens at the 15 and run out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Troy Long with a tackle, but Aikens comes up with a key grab. That was a big play. Aikens runs about a 15-yard curl route. Here you go, Jenkins takes the five steps, drop, fires. There's Aikens for the curl route. Missed tackle over there, and Aikens gets about 15 more yards. And there's that sideline. Is that a receiver's advantage or what? Aikens, three-time All-Arena first-teamer out of Northern Illinois. 39 grabs last year, 10 TDs to lead the league in those categories. Carl Aikens, and he's a player. Popular guy here after the heroics for Dallas last season in their initial year when they went six and two to tie for the regular season title with Detroit and then eventually fell to the drive in the championship game in Detroit in front of a record crowd of over 20,000 at Joe Louis Arena. Meanwhile, Babe Pirelli's Denver team came in here last year, four and four in the regular season, lost to Dallas last time they were here. Dallas, a miracle come from behind victory. This reminiscent of your old cowboy team, Stony Hill. <laughs> Yeah, but Coach Pearson wasn't there then. That was Coach Stautner, another Dallas Cowboy, though. Ernie Stautner, the coach of the year last year in this league, has moved on from Dallas to the Denver Broncos and the NFL as an assistant coach. Aikens with three grabs for 60 yards and has a touchdown to his credit. He had the opening score for Dallas tonight. There's our situation with 35.1 seconds to go. Dallas up by 10. First and 10, the ball on the 11 of the Dynamite. Running back is Hood behind Jenkins. Jeff Jenkins in motion. Alfred to throw. And just out of the reach of Sam Moore, Williams was covering. Williams is playing very good defense on Sam Moore. There may be a five or six inch height, of, uh, height advantage. It may be a 30, 40 pound weight advantage, but, but uh, Moore is having a problem shaking Williams. Williams is right there, and as Coach, as Coach Babe really said, this guy's a player. They, they don't call him Abdul for anything or for nothing. He makes the play. Alvin Williams out of Texas Southern. Three interceptions a year ago, two coming in here tonight. Second down and 10. On the 11, Dallas up by 10, looking for more before intermission. Jenkins, nice scramble. Found a man on the bounce, though. Incomplete. Intended for Jeff. He made the grab on the bounce. It was a trap. Long was covering. Here, Alfred shows a lot of patience, and, and, and which is a, a credit to himself. He, he doesn't, most quarterbacks right there would take off and run, but he waits to make the play develop, and the ball is just a little short. Jeff, his brother, made a great effort at it. Looking, saying, did he get it? Did he get it? Jenkins thought he had a touchdown there, and then he says, oh. 
you didn't see the just, bounce. Just a little longer. Kept his poise that time, though, whereas he had in a few previous plays. Third down and 10 on the 11 now with 22 seconds to go. Going to keep. He'll get the first down. No. Just shy. 15.9 seconds, clock stops, and then a timeout by Dallas with Abraham making the tackle. And he made a big tackle, too, because Jenkins had a touchdown. You'll see you'll see Abraham's in your screen just come out of nowhere and just flat-out speed run over there and make the play. From another angle. Here it is. Jenkins takes a three-step drop, so he's going to try to throw a quick pass, and the receiver run and slants, and here comes Abraham's out of nowhere to make a great play because Jenkins had an easy six points. So now Dallas faced with a fourth down situation. 15.9 seconds to go. They still got a timeout or two to work out with here. And the ball on the two yard line. Need to pick up a yard to get a first down. Of course, two for the score. Well, this is an interesting decision by Coach Pearson. It's a tough one. You, do you take the easy three? Well, not easy three. Do you take three points or do you go for the score? Yeah, not an easy three in this league. When a coach goes for it on this play, he believes in his offense, or, and more importantly, he, he believes in an offensive line because he's got to have time or they got to make a hole for this play. They break the huddle and send Aikens wide left, more out to the right side on a fourth down and one from the two. On the keeper, let's see where they mark his forward motion being stopped as to whether or not he got the first down or not. It looked initially that he would easily get the first down, but then shoots and Adams hit him hard and drove him back and see where they place it. No, sir, did not get the first down. Dynamite football with 11.9 seconds to go. And great defensive stand on the part of Denver. An excellent stand. Denver needed a big play. They need a few big plays right now. No one hit that linebacker. Bart Schutz came up there, filled the hole, and made a great play. You can't run a quarterback sneak with a guy unprotected. Uh, I don't know what the choice was on that decision, but the quarterback should always go where he's got a man blocked. Coming off the field is Tim Adams out of BYU, 6'4", 285. The Dynamite with 11.9 seconds to go. Let's see what Hold comes up with. Again, nothing's impossible in this game. Doucette was the intended receiver, but it was blocked by Costar. Actually, that wasn't a bad play. The cornerbacks on Dallas are paying 10 to 15 yards off the ball. These guys make a quick catch one-on-one. -on -one. It's anybody's game. I think um, they might want to reevaluate that prevent defense. Babe Pirelli, you saw him looking down. He calls all the plays offensively. I know when I was playing for the Dallas Cowboys, we used to hate to see that prevent defense because teams would just take advantage of it, put themselves in scoring position. As a result, it's another tough game. Crowd getting into it. Hole wants to keep, and he is brought down around the three-yard line, and that will be the end of the first half. So the Denver Dynamite runs out the clock here to end the first half, trailing by 10. And the Dallas faithful that have showed up to back the Texans are loving it. It's been an exciting opening half of the 50-yard indoor war. Stay with us for halftime activities, including an interview with Drew Pearson, 23-13. touchdowns tying the league record for a game five touchdowns came through the air and the sixth on this 56 yard missed field goal return the France scored 36 of the drives 56 points in their win over the Orlando Predators last Friday night the Ironman award for this week went to Lynn Bradford of the Tampa Bay Storm in a game that saw the storm clash with the Columbus Thunderbolts, Bradford led the surge on offense with three rushing touchdowns, which moved him into second place in the league in scoring. On defense, he recorded seven solo tackles and three assists to place him second in the league in defense as well. talk Tony in college football about reducing costs of scholarships by returning to one platoon football I think this league proves it can be done and be exciting 
Well, I'll tell you what, I, I don't know about that because you're talking about an entire different. Welcome back to halftime of Arena Football on Prime Network. Bill Land and Tony Hill with you. The Denver Dynamite trailing the Dallas Texans 23 to 13 at Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas. We'll take a look at some of the first half highlights as well as the, the statistics from our contest. And man, the teams came out, Dallas came out on fire tonight as on their first possession, Aikens gets a 30-yard grab from Alfred Jenkins and on top for six. Yeah, great play. Alfred Jenkins used play action. He hit Aikens over the top for a score. Excellent play. Detroit, rather Denver, on its first possession and hold is picked off here by Jackson. Yeah, Jackson's playing zone defense. Hold goes right into the strength of the defense. Jackson makes the play and makes the score. With a score 23 to 7 and Dallas looking for a blowout, Denver came back on a big play of its own with 7.20 to go in the half as Foreman gets a 35-yard reception. Denver takes advantage of Foreman one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back or the linebacker and there's no, there's no, there's no contest at this situation. And Foreman scores, cousin of George Foreman. What a knockout punch. 23-13 <laughs> as it puts them uh, within 10. Here's a look at the other numbers. First downs, Denver with just two as the Dallas defense has been tough tonight. Look at that passing yardage in the differential there as Jenkins with 132 yards to holds 37. Rushing, not much of, of any kind of ground game this evening. The total yards, all Dallas. The penalties, uh, not much of a factor tonight. The turnover sort of have been important with Jackson's interception for a score. That might be the difference in the game. Well, the bottom line is Denver has not moved the ball. They're not producing in any any type of situation. However, they're only 10 points behind. They're still in the game. So they've got an excellent opportunity. They feel they can hold Dallas to maybe 7 to 10 points in the second half and score some points. They can be in the game. Two teams come in at 1-1, one and one, looking to get above 500. We'll be back with the second half kickoff. Dallas leading Denver 23-13. Football and arena football at Reunion Arena in Dallas, Texas. Welcome back to Prime Network's coverage. Dallas and Denver here in Dallas tonight. 23-13 our score with the Texans on top of the dynamite. Talk about Ironman, Wayne Coffey, one of those. And look at the return yardage category. It's one thing that's helped keep Denver in this game. One of the better return teams in the league on kickoffs as well as missed field goal returns. Four for 93 yards. And Coffee is an excellent two-way player. He's a great player. He's got a lot of moves, a lot of agility. He's really smart. He's a smart ball player. He keeps his eyes open. You know, one of the things Dallas wanted to improve, I was talking to Coach Aaron Mitchell out there, is that, that they wanted to improve their specialty teams. Dallas is an offensive-minded club, and most of their players are offensively geared, and they're not used to making tackles or going out and selling out, and they've got to improve in that area and become more aggressive. It's kind of funny. You talk about improving defense or improving specialty teams. In regular football, you're talking about a different unit. Here, you're still talking about the same guys. It's just that phase of your game, and you really uh, have to dedicate yourself in practice to how much time you're going to spend on one side of the ball as compared to the other, don't you, Tony? Well, that shows how much strategy is involved in this game. Coaches have to know their personnel. They have to know when and when not to substitute and, and how they can take advantage of, of a player who may be a little short on one side. You can only make a substitute once and a quarter as far as per player. Denver on the return. Here's Coffee to the 10, 15, 20, and out to midfield. What a great return by Wayne Coffee. Hurd brings him down, but not before he returns it to just an inch shy of the 25. Well, just speaking of Coffee, he shows a little bit of excitement. Matter of fact, a lot of excitement. He's a great, a great wide receiver defensive back. He's got a great move, and he knows how to hit that hole. Familiar with Babe Pirelli, of course, when Pirelli was at New England. The uh, an 87 season went with him out to Denver and familiar to the folks in th this market as uh, an all Southland conference player coffee was in his days at Southwest Texas State. You saw holds numbers first and 10 at the 25 and Denver decides to keep it on the ground to start the half as Foreman is tackled by Coster on the play. Denver's desperately trying to find trying to find something to get to try to find something to get it going right now. They're, they're trying to run the ball to, to establish some type of game plan. Here's a look at me. This guy ate six pizzas by himself. Thrown out last week, they had quite a melee here against New Orleans when Dallas fell in its home opener on the home coaching debut of Drew Pearson. Shoots his hit hard as he takes it into Dallas territory. Jeff Jenkins with the hit. 
on Bart shoots out of Florida State. Boy, that's a hit right there. Shoots runs a quick slant or a quick sideline pattern. Here comes Jenkins from the sideline. Catches shoots going on backwards and boom. Look at that hit right there. Momentum already carrying him that way. Jenkins decided just to add a little mustard to it. And it makes it a third down and seven on the opening possession of the third quarter for the Denver Dynamite. To the top of your screen goes Doucette. Coffee comes wide to the left. Here's Hole. Got Doucette. He's got the first down inside the 15 of Dallas. Jackson was covering on the play, but an excellent job by Holden Doucette. Yeah, this is a lot of composure. He's in the shotgun. One, only Denver's one of the few teams that use this type of situation. Great pass to Doucette on the sideline. He runs a 10-yard 10 10-yard 10 curl, enough just to get the first down and a great execution. First and 10 for the Dynamite. And I'm sure this is what Babe Pirelli was looking for. They got the excellent kick return, sets them up with good field position. They're down by 10. Shoots. What a run by Shoots as he takes it to the eight yard line. And there again is one of the, I think, interesting and nice things about arena football in that you can go in motion as long as your first step is to the side or backwards, Tony. It shoots, goes backwards, then comes forward to get the ball. You have never seen anything like that, but only in arena football. And it gives shoots an opportunity to come in full speed. And look at that momentum. He carries four people with him. You know, we see that a lot on the looping motion with a receiver, but we haven't seen that very often in our first couple of weeks as far as a running play. No, not at all. Matter of fact, it's the first. Nice twist by Babe Pirelli. Second down and six for the Dynamite. Hold, lofting in the end zone. Flag thrown, touchdown Denver if it holds. Jackson covering on the play, and I believe it will stand up. And they use the same similar play. They faked the ball to shoots this time and laid the ball up to do set. Looked like it might have been offensive face guard or defensive. Pass interference on the defense. Decline, touchdown. Just as I thought. Interference and of course they decline it with the score. Take a look at it here. Here shoots comes to play action fake, makes a good block on Coster, lays the ball up. Look a little face guarding over there by Jackson, and as a result, Doucette scores the point. Fricky for the point after, and this one is true. And the dynamite doing exactly what they wanted to do, coming out strong after the intermission and getting on the board. It's 23-20, Dallas on top. Kickoff in a moment. Dallas with a 23-20 lead, but Denver coming out strong to start the second half. Hold to Doucette for nine yards and the score. Excellent concentration by Doucette. You see over there Jackson's face guard grabbing his shirt, and he makes a great play. And the scoring drive, five plays, 25 yards, took 3.04. And Hold popping it off with the TD pass, and Hold now has thrown for two and scored one himself as Denver right back in this thing here in Arena Football. A big and play by Denver. They, they, they did exactly what they wanted to do. They, they scored in the first opening drive to establish some, some substance and some power on their other uh, their ball club. Long kickoff by Fricky and is taken by Jenkins. Jeff tripped up, flag thrown. He stopped at the eight. Maybe seven and a half yard line. Tillman and Schutz making the tackle for Denver. We'll wait for the penalty. Well, you'd have thought he stole some as many flags went up there in the, <laughs> on that field. Legally, the use of the hands, 65 white. You heard it. Illegal use of the hands by Jeff Hurd of the Texans. Out of Kansas State, 6'3", 245-pounder. So that'll take it back to just inside the five, make it the four-yard line, and a first and 10, though, for the Dallas Texans. And we'll see a little bit of what the Texans are made of here as they uh, have had their lead threatened, finally. Dallas jumped off to a 20 to nothing lead in the first period, led by 10 at intermission, and Denver on its opening possession, scoring with the TD, and. Dallas hurt with the penalty and now in their own backyard. Ward bowling balls his way out across the 10 to near the 11 and a half before Foreman and Long make the tackle. Boy, Ward had a hole large enough to run a Mack truck through there. Good block by Meats. They kick out the block and Ward comes right underneath. It's called a trap play. Good running, good hit by Long there. 
Titans second down and two after the eight yard pickup. 10 50 and counting. Third quarter, 23 20 Texans over Denver. Alfred Jenkins with a call. Ward again. Nice cutback. And across the 15. Easily with a first down out to the 18 yard line where Schutz makes the stop. Drew Pearson looking at his play selection. That was a great individual effort by Ward. He said he went right, saw there was no action, he cut back, and he went north and south. And that's the way you have to, you have to go in order to be productive. Mitchell Ward getting two carries back to back and making the most of them. Ward came in averaging 3.7 per carry. Another Southwest Texas State player. All league first team pick last year in arena ball. Man in motion is Kenny and flags thrown before the play develops here. Well, it looks like Look like Ward is having a few words over there with Joe March. We'll have to take a look at that. I saw 73 March and, and Ward talking at one another. Well, understand if you didn't catch the telecast from the top that these two teams met three times a year ago, twice in the regular season, Denver winning both times here and in Denver. And then in the playoffs, Dallas, a miracle come from behind win to oust Denver and to go on to meet Detroit for the Arena Bowl title. And that's the last time these two met was here in Dallas last summer. So there's some bad blood there. Nearly picked off the ball thrown out in front of Coster. No, I don't know about Coster on that play. I think he had an opportunity to just stop running on that play. They use a plate play action. It's the same play that they had when they scored a touchdown. Here it is. Coffee makes a good play. I think Coster was looking at Coffee all the way and not the ball. Coffee will make you do that. We, as a receiver, we call that when a receiver gets some alligator arm. You just can't stretch him out for some reason. There's a look at Coffee. Second and 13. Kenny in motion for the Texans. Comes back now. Now for Jenkins. And he is sacked on his own four-yard line by Joe March. And there's March over there. He's talking. I told you he's... He didn't like what something that, that Ward had to say. Here comes March, full speed. He runs right by me. Makes the play, and then he's got a few words for Jenkins afterwards when he gets up. Well, Jenkins, who started out red hot, is three for his last 12 in passing as March. Here, March uses a spin move that's commonly used in the NFL to make the move, and Meeks puts his hands on his head, knows that he's made a tremendous mistake. Never let a guy go that free. March gets his fourth sack of the season, so he's a specialist there and leads the league in that category. Third down and 25 for Dallas. Jenkins got his man. Did he get the first down? No, and it's incomplete. Moore never could find the handle as Williams was covering, and he was a couple yards shy of the first anyway. Well, I've seen this play numerous times. They call wing 16. It's where the wing runs about 20 yards and comes across the middle. It's an old Dallas Cowboy play that Drew has brought into this, brought to this team. The two inside receivers run a streak pattern and clear out the middle. Well, what it means for Dallas now is something like a 60, 61 yard field goal. They're going to kick it from their own end zone. Eight yards deep for the goal post. So 58 plus whatever he is in his own end zone. About a 63 yarder. Coming up here for power. Line drive. Be returned by Coffee from the four. Looking for a hole. Great job by Coffee to the 15, the 20. Oh, mama, hold on as Coffee crosses midfield. What a sensational return by Coffee. Hey, he's a heck of an athlete. He showed a lot of ability, a lot of ring. I mean, he just he knows where to go. He's got his eyes all over the field. Great peripheral vision. Watch this move over here. And now watch the footwork. A lot of flags thrown. You kind of wonder when a guy makes a great return here if it wasn't an illegal block. Yeah, or holding. It's tough to hold a guy out for that long. It's going to be nullified, and that's a shame for Denver and Coffee as all that effort doesn't go for naught, but it does bring it back to the 15-yard line. Yeah, I think it was blocking below the waist on that particular play. Babe Pirelli. Hang in there, gang. Vito Babe Pirelli. <laughs> 
Remember him when he used to play for the old Boston Patriots? Oh, he was a heck of a quarterback. An interesting story told us today about backing up Joe Namath that we'll throw to you that he recalls from a time when they came to Dallas. The Dallas defense is fired up. Flags are everywhere as Willie Cannon gets the carry. Harris makes the tackle for the Texans. Cannon is out of Murray State, 6'2", 220. Well, in talking to Coach Perilli, he one thing he mentioned to us, he said, we owe Dallas one. And, and you know he's got those guys fired up and they're ready to go. Back in the neutral zone. On the defense. Back in the neutral zone. That's where that linebacker lines up too close. You see number 44, Mitchell, he's still, he's just too close in the backfield. You're only allowed to line up four yards from that tackle or that guard that's on the line of scrimmage. Well, that certainly hurts. And with 6.46 to go here in the third period, Dallas with a 23-20 lead and the Dynamite will now have it first and seven. Let's see, they're gonna put some time on the clock, I think. Fans, you, gotta, you have to understand there's an imaginary zone that those linebackers must stay within. And if they're in or, or out that, that, that imaginary zone, they will get a penalty. And that's, what hap that's what's happened to the Dallas Texans. Pitch out on the play. And not much doing that time for Denver Cannon on the carry. Bradley, haven't seen much of him tonight as the Texans working things defensively now. Third down and two for Denver. 6-18 and counting in the third. Let's see. Big play for Denver. Hold keeps the football. Gutty play. Can he get the first down? No. He just holds on. Well, they went to the leading rusher, or, or second in the league. Yeah, he's their leading rusher, and thought he was going to get it initially, Tony, but he Bradley finally made the tackle. Bradley made a big play. That was me to grab that jersey, though. That strength right there, or what? Frank Denard made a big play to stop that first down. And now for Denver. Third down. Okay, I think I give you an correction. I'll correct myself here. Third down and two. Hold. From his own 13. Got a man. It's intercepted by Dallas. That's Jeff Jenkins for the Texans. Great play by Jenkins. Did you make a fantastic play? Hold had a receiver over for a minute, and, Jake, and Jenkins just took that ball away. The coaches have been raving about this guy. They say he's a player. He's intelligent. He's smart. He can play in this league, and he can play in the NFL. They like him a lot. Here it is. Holt has a lot of time. You see a crossing route. Receiver coming to your screen, and there goes Jenkins. It just takes the ball away. Now, he could have stayed. If he could have stayed in bounds, he can touch that wall and still be eligible to run the ball back. Yeah, he could have used the wall if he could have gathered himself quickly enough to just use the hand to push off as long as he keeps his feet in bounds. Timeout called. Dallas will start deep in its own territory, but still leading by three. We've got a dandy in Dallas as Denver and Dallas are hooked up in a 23-20 battle. The Texans with the football, but the nice interception by Jeff Jenkins gives the Texans a football about the, oh, what do you call that? About the eight-inch line. And Jenkins comes out of his own backyard to get going here. First and 10, Dallas up by three, but out of their own end zone. Kenny in motion. Flags thrown as Jenkins keeps the football. They got an offsides, I believe. Here. I think Kenny was about 20 yards downfield when the ball was snapped. Uh, right there, I think it was just a lack of communication. Alfred didn't didn't have the ball snapped soon enough. And can't take it much further back toward the goal line. You can't afford those type of mistakes at this point in time. When you're, when you're backed up in your own backyard, such as Dallas is, they need to move the ball forward. They need to get out of the situation so they can progress. And it's those type of mistakes last week that cost Dallas a victory as they had five fumbles, lost three of them, had an interception that uh, certainly cost them uh, a chance to win the game. Second down. 
Ball on the three. As the penalty against Denver. Take your part on that. And out across is Ward. Abraham and Spady make the tackle. As Jenkins looks for the play. And it'll be third and long now for the Texans. It's getting tough in those trenches right now. Right now, this is where the game is won, right up front. You see how the Texans will handle the Denver, Denver Dynamites uh, off defensive line. See Drew Pearson, his first year's head coach here, replacing Ernie Stautner, one-time Dallas Cowboys assistant, who is back in the NFL now with Denver after a great year here a year ago. We'll have a chance to visit with Ernie tomorrow. Jenkins on third down, gets his man. First down, Texans. Tillman makes the tackle on Aikens, but not in time, and they'll have it at the 16. Well, Willie Cannon comes untouched. Watch. Here you go. The Ninja Turtle Award misses the block, but Jenkins shows a great amount of composure by letting that ball go for the completion to Carl Aikens. A lot of composure right there. Drew's got to be quite happy with that type of with that type of playing. Yeah, it appears that Jenkins, he doesn't get rattled back there. His bad throws sometimes come from maybe just lack of experience and throwing it away when he shouldn't, but he hangs in about as tough as you could ask any quarterback to be. First and 10 on the 16. Texans up by three, looking for more. And incomplete to Sam Moore that time as Alvin Williams was covering just out of the reach of Sam Moore. And what, the, what Dallas is doing, they're clearing it out. They're sending the two inside receivers deep and the outside receiver comes across to Millett. It's an old Dallas Cowboy play called Wing 16. Drew has made numerous catches like that. I guess number 88 is the guy they're going to. One more look at play action. Drew considers Sam Moore his big play receiver. Whoa, and there's number 33, Willie Cannon. They're going to have to do something about that. It's the second time he's been in there on Alfred Jenkins. Second down play. Twisting and getting out of bounds is Moore again. Makes the reception on this one. Williams and Abraham both covering on the play. Another first down for your It's a first down for the Texans. Simple turn in play there to get him a first down. So Dallas reacting well to being backed up even though they took over on an interception. They had the ball on about their own half yard line and they moved it out now into Denver territory. Take a look there, Moore, third in the league in receiving coming in and actually leading the league in receptions with 17. Third in yardage at 185, 10.9 per reception. First and 10. And this one is complete to Frank Harris out of Northern Michigan. Coffee makes the tackle at the 17, like at the 18 yard line. Harris out of Northern Michigan. Coffee made a great play on that. It's the same play they tried earlier with Coster. They, play, they faked the play action and came back to the tight end. Good play by Coffee, but great execution by Alfred Jenkins. They try to look for something on that list that says stop them. <laughs> Denver came out well at the start of the half. Went the length of the field to score on its opening possession. Stopped Dallas, got it back, was driving, had it intercepted, and now the Texans on the move. Second and five. Jenkins tripped up and sacked. And another big play. This time Spady comes up with it with March also there. And Dallas now will be third and long, actually third and ten. Well, Jenkins has been fortunate, actually. He's gotten away on several occasions. Denver is bringing in the rush. Dallas is not allowing Dalford Jenkins much time to get rid of the ball. And that particular time they got him for the sack. They have to pick it up. They've got to pick up their block, and if they want to give Jenkins an opportunity to to, to uh, do a good job for the for the Texans, we'll which he has Spady. been doing. Pardon me, out of UTEP, 6'2", 225. And Spady gets credit for the sack. That is his first of the year. Third down and 10 for the Texans from the 23 of Denver. Jenkins under great pressure again, and it's intercepted by the Dynamite. And across to the 23, almost the 25-yard line. Gerald Abraham comes up with the interception. And the dynamite comes up with a key play defensively. Well, that's a tough, that's a tough play. Here's the pressure again. Jenkins is not getting very much time, and he throws off his back foot. That's one thing a coach never wants his quarterback to do is throw off that back foot backpedaling. As a result, the interception. And as I mentioned, Dallas is gonna have to pick up their protection. Dynamite on the move within three. We'll take a break and be back on Prime Network. Hi, I'm...
That's 23.3 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Welcome back, Bill Land and Tony Hill with you. Abraham comes up with his first reception of the year out of Wyoming and gives the dynamite the football at midfield, just shy of the 25-yard line. Gerald Abraham for Denver. And Denver down 23-20 with a chance to go on top. That was a big play right there. Dallas had a lot of momentum. They were moving the ball down. They were running time off the clock, and Abraham made a big play. Out of the shotgun. Let's see what Denver does and see if they come back with a big play of their own. We won't find out for a moment, thanks to the flags. Just the same, Roulette came in to say hello to Mike Hold. Allen Roulette in his first game here for the Texans of East Texas State. Legal formation on Dallas in the neutral zone. Legal formation on Dallas in the neutral zone. So Denver will pick up a few on that. And the three-yard penalty makes it a first down and seven now for the Dynamite. And they're in Dallas territory on the 23-and-a-half-yard line. Clock ends the third period here. Fast-paced action, and they're loving it here in Dallas. Texans lead it by three after three. We'll take a break. We'll be back with the fourth and final quarter here on Arena Football, the 50-yard indoor war. Welcome back after three quarters. Hold not impressive overall. Five for 15 passing, but it's been good enough as he's also scored one himself and thrown a couple of TD passes. Dallas, on the other hand, Jenkins, a big night early with 161 yards, two scores, has been cold lately. Jenkins has been the big receiver for the Texans with 73 yards reception, receiving and had an opening TD for the Texans as we get ready to start the fourth period here. The Dynamite trailing Dallas, 23-20 in Dallas. Denver with the football. Bill Land and Tony Hill with it. And on the first and seven, an incompletion with flags thrown gives us an opportunity to welcome Ernie Stauntner, the former Dallas Texan coach, and of course, NFL Hall of Famer and for many years with the Dallas Cowboys and now back in the National Football League with the Denver Broncos. And Ernie, uh, what do you think of your own ball club? Oh, I think they're, uh, they're doing well, you know. They, they had a little bit of a down spell right at the beginning of the third period, but uh, most of the, quite a few of the guys I know and they have a lot of character to them. I, I think they'll come back pretty strong. What I really want to know is my partner here, Tony Hill, could he play in this league playing both ways? Oh, don't put me under the firepower now. Wait a minute. <laughs> I'd certainly find a Be place kind. for him on defense because I know he can play offense. I'll carry to you that. Well, I'll tell you what, this whole rivalry here that exists is all because of this gentleman sitting beside us. Uh, they beat Denver three games three. in a row, correct? Three times. Three yeah. times. All right, first down and five for the Dynamite and shoots on the carry inside the 15 down near the 12-yard line where Sam Moore makes the tackle for Dallas. Dallas has been hurt by eight penalties for 30 yards tonight, and I know Drew Pearson's having some trouble getting everything to click, Ernie. That's something that you're not totally unfamiliar with, is it? No, it's not something I'm familiar with, I'm familiar with at all. Uh, do, do give him a, about one or two more games, and I think that he'll be acclimated to what's going on here. He's doing very well considering coming into it as short as he did, believe me. Second down and six to go. Ball on the 13 for Denver. Here's Hold on the carry. Unusual in this league that a guy like Hold would be a team's leading ball carrier and he's second in the league, Ernie, in rushing. He's, uh, I'll tell you, Mike Hold is an excellent quarterback and he adds that other dimension of being able to run with the ball and it puts a lot of pressure on the defense, especially in a game like this where 90% of your offense is passing. And uh, Bate, Bate really has done a good job in devising motion plays with a run uh, added and then off the same play he's, he's throwing a pass. I just noticed these things. It was so something like we did a year ago against him. Third down and three and Denver keeps it on the ground to get the first down and then a fumble. All right, all the right. Texans have recovered. Dallas recovering. Heard, I believe. Jeff Heard comes up with a loose one for the Texans and Denver still not convinced. That's what we need right here is a break like that, you know, can always set the fire off again. Well, it's a big play for Dallas right here. Denver runs a trap play to shoot. They, they strip the ball out of there, and I believe that is number 65, Jeff Hurd, who makes the play over there. Great play, jumps on the ball, does a great job. You remember old Jeffrey, Tony? Oh, yeah, he was with the Cowboys a couple times. Yes, Real sir. character player for us last year here, too. Sure. He did a good job. All right. 
right, let's see what Dallas could do with it. Last time they got an interception started from their own. All right, Mitchell, hold on, baby. You gotta wait. Mitchell oh. Ward carried the football and he coughs it up and shoots gets it back for Denver. Well, that's the worst thing that can happen to Dallas. Dallas right major there. major concern this this week was turnovers and right here in your own plus territory, which is within the 10 yard line, you can't afford those kind of plays. Mitchell has a huge hole, but he doesn't hold on to the ball. Actually, he takes a heck of a hit. He did. He did take a good hit. And shoots who fumbled the ball last time recovers the fumble. What a great lead! You can go get it back. That's what I like about it. Playing both ways. As shoots takes care of business, and now it's first down and goal to go for Denver. And oh, hold. good play, good play. That was Sam Moore, wasn't it? That was a great play by Sam, Sam Moore. That was Sam yeah, Moore. Yeah, that was Sam Moore. Sam Moore rifled in or used a rifle technique where he just came in full speed and, and made a big hit on Mike Hole. Understand as you look at this, the cheerleading up here is not from my partner who is impartial, Tony Hill, but Ernie Stotner, the former Texan <laughs> coach, and you can't blame him pulling for his own ball club. I just want people to make sure they send those letters to the right address. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Ernie's uh, he's in the Dallas West or in the Denver, Denver area, aren't you? That's right, Tony. They call it the, the Dallas West. Good block. Hold oh, that, that pass Texan AM right. told me he's a good man. Attempted pass by Hole. There is Coster out of Texas A&M, and we'll take a look at it, the replay, and you, you describe it, Ernie. Here, oh, yeah, that, that's a great jump right there. I'll tell you that. He, his timing was good, and he hit that ball just at the perfect time. Right now, Denver needs a big play right now. They're in scoring position, and this is the time they have to come up with something. Third down and goal to go from the three for the Dynamite. They trail 23-20, and they're all on their feet here in Dallas. Shoots in motion. Dallas got their backs up. They got their backs up, man. But Dallas made a big play right there. Denver ran went to an option play with Hold and Shoots running the ball. And as a result, they took away the option, and, and, and Mike Hold didn't have anywhere to go. Denard and Coster. Here's another look at it right here. He fakes the play action. He's got Foreman out there. Sam Moore takes away the option. And a great play by, by Hurd and then the whole group of those guys over there. And that means Fricky on for the field goal attempt. About a 21-yarder. Hold, holding, flag strong. The kick was good, but wait a minute. It was motion. <laughs> That's a coach for you when he's able to pull those out. <laughs> Procedure number 73, okay. Denver. That's the call. I saw the line removed, Tony. Hey, that, that, that guy knows it. Nobody knows it better than former, I mean, well, all pro <laughs> Hall of Famer Ernie Stodner. He's had some great ones, though, the, the coach have a journey. Oh, man, I'll tell you, after Bob Lilly, Randy White, Jeff Rocheau, Larry Cole, he's got, a, Andre, he's got a Hall of Fame list that he's coached. <laughs> I'd like to have a few of those with the Broncos this fall, wouldn't you? Oh, man, I sure would. All right, they'll retry the field goal. They'll move it back, and this time it's a 24-yarder. Fricky's kick. Oh, it's what a difference that makes. That should be a five-yard penalty. You've got to be five yards away from the receiver. That's not the receiver. Five that should yards. Should be a five-yard penalty. We've but got the, an expert on this game up here, folks. But the officials didn't see it this time. See that? The officiating though has gotten better, has it not? Oh yeah, it, it'll improve as this game keeps going. Here's a look at the kick, and we'll go to a commercial break with you. Fricky is down. Over four. Denver still trailing. 23-20 now. All-American, one company with a single focus on football. All-American is able to keep in sharp focus our three goals. To provide the very best at reconditioning service, the best new equipment products, and to provide the services and products more affordably than anyone else. For the third straight season, the All-American Max Pro 2001 helmet is being worn exclusively as the official helmet of the Arena Football League. Max Pro Helmets by All-American. That, that job right there, mate. Dallas with a 23-20 lead over Denver as we are in the fourth quarter and 10-20 to go. And this place is jumping as the Texans have held defensively after a turnover exchange. And now Dallas will have it first and 10 from its own five-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, Dallas uh, talking to Aaron Mitchell and Coach Dick Nolan is an offensive-minded team. And you got to be very proud. they got to be very proud of that secondary and that defensive line as far as the way they play. 
Ruben. Mickey Russell comes in now out of Angelo State. Jenkins out with a bruised shoulder. Should be back, we're told. Here's Russell in trouble and unloads it. It is complete, though, no. to uh, the ruling out as Frank Harris, their intended receiver, and Alvin Williams covering on the play. Here is Mickey Russell out of Angelo State here in Texas. 6'1", 195-pounder, all-time leading passer and total offensive man at Angelo State. I think they ought to put that back on replay. Yeah, I think um, we were talking about that wall. There was a perfect opportunity where, where Moore used that wall as a, as a springboard and may have been in bounds, and that play may be still good. No replay here. Second down and 10. Ball on the five for the Texans. We're inside nine and a half minutes to go in the ballgame. Russell calling the shots. Good protection. Got a man deep. That's a good. All right, Carl. Great catch. Great catch by Carl. And a flag plus after. A five yard, plus an eight-yard penalty. Boy, they're going at it. Man-to-man -man defense. Russell makes a great play. He stays in the pocket. Shows a tremendous amount of composure for a guy who yeah, just comes into the game. who was a first time first team all leaguer last year veteran big night for Carl with five receptions for 105 and a score he opened the game for Denver with the TD they jumped off to a 20 to nothing lead but it's tight now at 23 20 first down Costa bumped out of bounds by Wayne Coffey a tight end delay route Good tackle by Coffey. One-on-one -on -one tackle. If he doesn't make the play, Costa scores. Here it is. Quarterback drops back. Costa runs a quick slant out. Here comes Coffey. He doesn't make this play. It's a touchdown. It's a great play. Coach Stodner, I've had a chance to, to visit with you. When you were playing, as I was saying, this is an offensive-minded team. What kind of players were you looking for, all-around players, when you were coaching the Texans? Tony, I always look for the defensive man first. Uh, I figured that if he could play defense I can teach them how to play the offense and uh, I, I think that's what most of the coaches are looking for Sloan Hood on the carry is stopped at the three and it will be a third down now and goal situation for the Texans and Ernie we ought to thank you very much for stopping by best of luck in Denver this year thank you and by the way I heard your broadcast when uh, New Orleans and Albany played and I enjoyed it very much in fact I saw it well, all thank right you thank you very much, much Ernie. That. thank hey, you have Ernie a great Stoddard. year coach you're a fabulous coach Ernie Stodner NFL Hall of Famer now coaching with the Denver Broncos former coach here here's Russell now on a third down and goal to go from the four yard line for the Texans up by three in trouble and sack at the 10 yard line by Joe March so March comes blowing through again and what a game this Murray State product is having and yeah, he's having a good game he's excited that's a big play right there I think Russell may have stayed in there a little too long. When you take a three-step drop, you expect to get the ball off in a hurry. And he stayed in there a lot. I think Coach... Here's a spin move by Marsh at the left part of your screen, and he just makes the play. He just beats this guy right off the bat. Remember, you have to come on the inside in this league when you do your rushing. Can't come from outside the end. 6.52 and counting as Marsh picks up his second sack. And now, fourth down and goal from the 10. Mickey Russell, the backup quarterback on his first series. Huge play for Dallas. In trouble and brought down again as, I'm going to call it incompletion. March again in the face of Russell. Coach Pearson looks a little upset about there. He's want somebody, somebody's not running the right route. Or I think he may be a little concerned about this defense coming from outside. 73, maybe talking about as rushing from the outside. I I believe his uh, problem here is he thought it was third down. I think that's what Drew was saying. Hey, that's only third down. The official just quickly told him, no, sir, as you take a look at Russell being brought down, that was fourth down, and Denver will get the ball. Pearson is still arguing with the official as we look at the replay again. We'll take a break. Stay with us. It is wild here in Dallas. Texans lead it by three with 6.20 to go. Distraught Drew Pearson as he lost his argument with the officials on what down it was. And 
with a 23-20 lead. I kind of wondered why there wasn't a timeout or much thought given because that was a huge play on a fourth down from the 10, fourth and goal. But Denver gets it back now on downs. First and 10 from the 10 for the Dynamite. Down by three. Hold into the stands. And there's a souvenir. There's a souvenir right there, fan folks. Uh, if you're a fan, you get a ball in your direction, you get to keep it and take it home. Hey, what, folks, if you take a look at Hold there as he's checking the plays on his wrist, come on out to Arena Football. I don't think you'll be disappointed, and you will be back as Babe Pirelli. We've got stalks the sideline. We've got intense, condensed, action packed football. The indoor war, and it is that tonight. Second and 10 from the 10. Hold in trouble. Escapes. Flag throw. Intercepted. Jenkins. Five, 10. 24-yard line. Crowd waiting to see which way the flag went, and it's against Denver, so they'll naturally decline it. Well, this Jenkins is a heck of a player right now. He's made catches. He's made defensive plays. Hold has a little time because of a hold, and he throws the ball up, and Jenkins just makes the play. This is Jenkins' second interception for the night. And it's a 14-yard return, some nifty running. It looks like a looks like a number 80 I've seen before. <laughs> what punishment? We'll be back with a break of the action. 5-18 to go, 23-20 Dallas. Put on a pair. Look, Denver was called for holding on this play. As you look at hold, throwing it up for grabs and the interception by Jenkins. Well, Jenkins makes a great play, great hands. Coach Dick Nolan said this guy is a player. He thinks he can play in the league. He's got ability offensively and defensively. And, and you see that he's made receptions and he's made catches, uh, defensive catches. And he's just performed all night. I think the Jenkins brothers have had a great night tonight. Alfred and Jeff. Jeff. What a combination for Dallas. Dallas, 222 yards of total offense tonight. Coming in, Dallas averaging just 178 and a half, and Denver held to just 99. Denver was averaging 190 coming in, or 180. Here's Russell playing in the place of the injured Jenkins, and he completes it to Kenny inside the 10. Boy, is that composure for a backup quarterback. He comes in, he scrambles, he waits for time, he gives the offer, gives the receiver a chance to break open. Anytime you give her, anytime you give a receiver three or four seconds to get open, it, there's no excuse for him not getting open. And that's what Russell does. He allows time. Look at the composure. He fakes a couple times, he points at the receiver and throws a bullet right on the line. A great catch by Kenny. But that play was all because of Mickey Russell making that play happen. Kenny out of Wisconsin. He's been kind of silent, and all of a sudden, he comes up with a huge play. And you can't say enough about Russell, who came on with Jenkins out with a bruised shoulder, brought him down the field last time, finally got sacked, and they couldn't convert on a fourth down. Timeout called by Dallas here as Russell wants to talk it over with head coach Drew Pearson. And then Russell back with another big play. Dallas knocking on the door, up by three with 4.12 to go. Stay with us on Prime. Welcome back to what has been our best matchup so far in week number three of Arena Football on Prime Network. I'm Bill Land, alongside former Dallas Cowboy Tony Hill. Dallas Texans with a 23-20 lead. There's Jenkins out with a bruised shoulder. We were told is able to play again if needed. But Russell has come on to hit three of five for 56 yards. It's now a first down and goal to go from the eight for the Texans. They lead it by three. Russell and out of play. Ten for Sam Moore. There's a flag. And a late hit against Denver, Troy Long. Well, there's that intense football. Russell just laid the ball up. It looked like it was a corner, pattern, a corner pattern where Sam Moore runs a post pattern and breaks to the corner. Here it is. He's breaking to the corner. It looks like Alvin Williams was holding him. And boy, he took a shot to his neck. He he could be pretty, he could be injured pretty severe in that play. No reason for this play, though, Tony. Oh, He's just hurting all. his own ball club. Not at all. Not at all. Matter of fact, they make a great play, and here they like, cost him yardage and, all, and an opportunity for Dallas to move the ball downfield. Got to be smarter than that, as Denver will be hurt by that, and thankfully Moore is okay as he is up, but he took quite a shot, and 
you expect it as long as the ball's in play. It's that after the whistle's blown that you can really get hurt sometimes because you find him relaxed, don't you? Well, those are costly mistakes. Any time you put your guard down, you get hit. That's the time when you get injuries. When you're not hustling or you, or you have your guards down, that's when you have your severe injuries. Uh, interesting statistic with Mickey Russell. He uh, he tried out for the Cleveland Browns and. For he has a knack for getting out of trouble because of his strong arm. He just showed us that on the last couple of downs. With a penalty, first and goal to go from the four. Kenny in motion for the Texans. They hand it off. And nice jitterbug move by Sloan Hood out of Texas A&I. David Smith made the tackle. And Hood is a guy, as uh, they say, Drew Pearson calls him a tank with legs. <laughs> and he is nimble, and that's what is impressive on that run there. Well, he played the same backfield as Johnny Bailey from Texas A&I, who's now with the Chicago Bears. That was a great slant pattern, a slant pattern right up the middle. And Hood had a tryout with the Bears, but you can imagine uh, when a guy like Bailey was at A&I, Hood didn't get to carry the football much. Uh, I don't think so. Second and goal to go. Tries to dive over Hood, and that won't fly. Dallas stuffed by that Denver line. Well, that was a stacked defense right there. That's the first time I'd seen it. They had the cornerbacks, the linebackers, and everyone within that four-yard zone. They're pretty close right there. Dallas leading by three. Remember, clock moving doesn't stop until the final minute of play in this ball game. 2:47 and counting. But even down by two touch or down by two scores, if Denver should give up a touchdown here, it doesn't mean it's over. All you got to do is ask Denver, because last year they thought they had a one in the playoff here, and Dallas came back in the final minutes to a surprise victory. Put again. Touchdown, Texas. from left to right, makes a good run, great eyesight, great peripheral vision, good job. And Dallas gets his first score of the second half. They scored three times in the first period and led 20 to nothing before Denver slowly marched back into this one. But Dallas has never trailed. Power on for the point after. Thrown. And this is a very important kick with it being a nine point game and the penalty going to be against Denver. That was a big score for Dallas right there. They needed that score last time they were down in, in what you call plus territory or scoring position and they didn't score and that cost them. And we'll see what kind of impact they may have in the game in the future if Denver is able to come back and score another touchdown or maybe ten points. Here he is, power now for a second shot, a little bit closer, and he puts this one through. So, and again, any ball in the stands is yours, ladies and gentlemen, as Dallas ups it to a 10-point lead again, 30 to 20 in favor of the Texans here at Reunion Arena. And if Denver loses, they are gonna lament this play as this is the penalty after the ball was overthrown, long levels more and it ends up setting up a first and goal from the four, and finally Hood takes it in. Yeah, that's a big play right there, and I'm sure Coach Perilli wish he could have that one back or just have an opportunity to talk to Troy. You don't need those kind of plays, especially in situations such as that was. Uh, right there, they had stopped him. They, there would have been third down and, and an opportunity for them to have to make a big play, and, and as a result, he gave him a first town opportunity, and Dallas scored on it. They took advantage of it. And really gave them an option of what they wanted to do, run sure. or throw, when they got it first and goal at the four, when if it's third down and goal from the 10, you're talking almost having to pass the football and a chance for maybe an interception. Well, the Texans will kick it off. Don't leave us yet. We're down to 130 and counting. Here's Williams for the dynamite. Brought down hard at the 14 by Mitchell Ward out of Southwest Texas State. Well, that was a heck of a tackle right there. I think tempers are flaring right now. And yeah, these two got a lot at stake right now. Coach Pirelli, as he said, he, he owes Dallas one. He wants to win this one. The last time they played was right here in Reunion Arena. And 
And as a result, uh, Denver came home with an upset victory. I mean, uh, upset uh, defeat. Uh, they were defeated that game for the championship. Scoring drive on that last possession. We'll take a look at it in just a moment. It is first down and 10 on the 14 for Denver with 1.15. And they'll stop it in a minute for the timeout. Hold. The fullback, Cannon. Nice move by Cannon. Flags everywhere as he goes across midfield. Brought down at the 24 and a half. There you go, Mr. Hans. I'm Denver. Denver. That's all you need to know as Aikens made the tackle. Nullify a nice run after the reception. And they ran a screen pattern. There's shoots pushing from behind on Jenkins, and that's where the play was called. Yeah, look at the official made the call way behind the play. Dallas scoring drive, five plays, 24 yards. Hood, a one-yard TD run. And Dallas doing it and showing some versatility as they're using both quarterbacks due to the injury to the starter tonight, Jenkins. Timeout call with one minute to go by the officials as Dallas has a 30 to 20 lead. But now the clock will stop on incompletions and on penalties and hold meeting with Babe Pirelli. Certainly an important game for both clubs at one and one on top as we speak, is Detroit at 2-0, oh, the defending champions, the only unbeaten in the league, but Orlando a winner last night in week three, and the Predators are now 2-1, and one, so the winner here would move into a tie for second place. Well, the interesting matchup. Both these teams are excellent ball clubs, and I think this league is pretty, pretty equal this year, except for maybe Detroit. Detroit's had a unit that's been together for the last three or four years, but there's a lot of talent in this league. First and ten for Hole. In trouble, got a block. Got a man, that is Coffee, and he's got it down at the 17-yard line of Dallas. Big play by Holt. He created this whole play by scrambling, getting outside the pocket, and hitting Coffee, who made what you call a receiver's adjustment. Timeout, Denver. Here's Holt. He makes the play happen. Coffee breaks to the open area. Holt puts it right on the money. Great, great execution, and here he goes. Well, and you can tell these two played together. Coffee, 16 receptions a year ago, and Hold, of course, uh, had an outstanding year for Denver as he threw for better than 1,200 yards and 18 scores. And Coffee reacting to the nice move by Hold, and as you mentioned, coming back to the ball. Yeah, well, Coffee's been, had a great day today. He's had some excellent returns. I'm not quite sure what his statistics are, but I'm sure they're very impressive. But he's got a knack. He's got great range. He's got a great perception of what's going on on the field, and, and he's got the ability just to get open and make big plays, as we've seen all day. There's something as you look at Drew Pearson that this game offers is when you play both ways, I would imagine you do have a better feel because you know what the other guy's thinking because you were there just a few minutes ago. Well, if you've been covering them all day, you got a reason to want to beat them anyway. Yeah, the last thing you want to do is go back on D. <laughs> First down and 10 at the 16 of Dallas. Denver trying to come back. 51 seconds to play. Flags again. Hold. Brought down at the 24-yard line. Ball whistled dead before the fumble, though, as Coster made the tackle. You know, when the flag was first thrown, about half the team, both ways, quit on the play, and then the officials continue to let him play. Well, I tell you what, Hold made a heads-up play. And the penalty was on Dallas. Hold made a head, he made a heads-up play. He, there's an opportunity that the whistle hadn't been blown. That means the ball is still alive. And if Coster hadn't made this play, there's an opportunity to make a big play. And the, obviously, the penalty was on Dallas. They would have made a big play. The play would have stood. Yeah, give credit to Coster for staying with it there, even though the penalty is against Dallas. Tony mentioned if he quits on it, the guy's got all day to make something happen. Hold, there's his numbers for the night at 81 yards, 6 of 19. Going for 272 coming in here tonight. Pump fake here. In trouble. And Meat has got him. Meat Denard brings him down on the 23 of Denver in a timeout dynamite. Meat said, I want some hole to eat. I'll have pizza later, right, later but right now I'll have Mike Hole for dinner. And he made a great play. He might have had a little, little Caesars at halftime, and that's what fired him up. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, here he comes straight. That's just straight out power move and strength. 
Here's a guy who weighs 320 pounds, runs a 5140. Uh, that's excellent ability right there. I tell you, I'm impressed with the strength of hold to be able to almost get away from. Look at this fella, Frank uh, Denard out of Arkansas State. Yeah, they, uh, they, from what I understand, he just got a haircut and they got an APB on his neck because they can't find it. He's got so much head over there. <laughs> Yeah, he's a player, though. All right, Tony, if you're Babe Pirelli in Denver, 30.2 seconds to go, down by 10, second down and 18 from midfield. What do you do? Of course, I'm not Babe Pirelli, but I think I'd throw it up into that net and let one of those big guys make the catch. Uh, Drew Pierce is familiar with the Hail Mary catch. They need a big play quick, and they need to get the, they need a quick score, and they need to get, a, get, the, get a, a chance on an onside kick. Out of the shotgun hole. Again, under pressure from his own 13. It is complete. Doucette, touchdown, Dynamite. And that play was made all because of Mike Hold. He broke loose from the tackle. He created an opportunity. And Doucette made a great play, made a great run after catching the, after catching the ball. I told you, don't go away. 21 seconds remaining. Here is a look. Watch this move by, by Hold. He gets out of that. He, he makes a great throw. Doucette has great concentration. Akins misses the tackle, and Doucette goes in for the score. And it was a quick score at that. So Doucette out of Wyoming comes up with a big play on Holds TD pass. Now the point after, this is Hughes with a four-point game, and it's good. Fricky gets the point after and makes it 30 to 27. Well, you got to be looking for an onside kick. I think everybody in the arena knows what's going on. 24 yards on the play, Doucette with the reception from Hold, and Dallas lead is trimmed to three. Now this is the time when you put in all your receivers, but I don't know if you're allowed to change at this point in time. This is a very strategic move right here. Because if you substitute, they can't come back in after they've already made another a substitution. So where do they go? But you're sure, you gotta be quite certain it's an onside kick. And last year, Dallas used an onside kick to get an opportunity to score to win the game. It's got all the makings of what uh, we saw in the playoff game here a year ago, except for the sides are reversed. It is Denver trying to come back with the wild finish after basically being dominated in the game. In the playoff game last year, Denver owned Dallas until Dallas came alive late. Hold is thrown for three deep. Three touchdowns tonight has also scored one. His overall numbers may not be impressive, but he's got a back in the ball game and with a chance with 21.1 seconds to go. Wouldn't it be something if Denver's able to, to get this onside kick? Oh, what an outcome. And wait and see what Fricky and crew decide to do here. As you kick it from the goal line in arena football. There's no one back deep at the present moment. Everybody in the house, including this, the fans, are expecting an onside kick. And now they'll send Kenny back to about his own. Ten. Here's the onside. Cannon recovered it, but he did not allow it to go. Yeah, he was a little early on. It. Great idea. He was a little early. And it's going to be Dallas football, I believe. Cannon with the recovery, but let's wait. One of the improving things about the league is the officiating and that these fellows are doing less of this for the most part tony there's not as much huddling as there were was in the initial and years illegal touching by denver dallas's ball first and ten. dallas football drew pearson smells victory number two for the texans well you got to remember the clock will stop if they're not getting progress it could be an advantage you cannot sit on the ball here's another look at that onside kick Cannon picks the ball about the eight-yard line. It never crosses the line. It never crosses the 10-yard mark. He caught it in the air about the eight-yard line, about eight yards downfield. But we've got to remember, the clock will stop if Dallas is not making yards. You cannot just sit on the ball and fall on it. If you do that, they'll not only stop it, they'll penalize you. So you have to always try to make positive yards. 5,932 here at a Reunion Arena. Last year, Dallas led the league in paid attendance at better than 11,700. They had over 8,000 for their opener, but after the loss, fans saying, show me, as on the carry, March makes the tackle, and there you see it as the officials 
Denver actually calling that timeout with 15.7 seconds to go. Coach Pearson's got to be awfully proud of Mickey Russell. He really stepped up and played big time in this game right here. Here he is, the guy's been on the bench all afternoon, hasn't had a chance to warm up. The quarterback goes down. They're in their own field. They're, they're in terrible field position, and he marches roughly about 45 yards for a drive to score a touchdown. Put yourself in Drew's position as you look at Babe Pirelli here. He's been in this situation a ton of times. But for Drew Pearson, do you think he's a little more nervous now than he was as a player in this situation? I don't, I don't know. I, I had the opportunity to play with that guy, and he was always nervous before the game. But when the game started, he put on that game face, and he was ready to go. Finally, I saw a bit of a smile there for Drew Pearson, though, as uh, he realizes that only a major mistake here will cost him something here as Russell keeps the football with 12.4 seconds to go and Denver out of timeout, timeouts. That'll do it. The Texans win it 30 to 27 here in Dallas. The Texans improved to two and one, and Denver falls to one and two with a 30 to 27 Texan win over the Dynamite. We'll be back to talk about it in a moment. Hi, I'm Jeff Kunkel here with my friend David Brown to tell you about an exciting double play. It's the Texas Rangers HSC double play donation night, June 19th. When you make a donation to Easter Seals, you're eligible for two tickets to a Ranger game, two seats in the HSE Luxury Box, and a trip to the West Coast to see the Rangers play. Call in your donations between 8 and 5 to help area children with disabilities. Join the Texas Rangers and HSC in support of Easter, Easter Seals. Seals. It's hard to believe what life would be like without pencils, telephones, computers, and even paper clips. And yet these everyday products were created by people much like you. If you have an idea, invention, or new product you'd like to submit to industry, Invention Submission Corporation has a free inventor's kit to help you get started. The kit contains a form for recording and dating your invention, an information brochure, and other materials of interest to inventors. Invention Submission Corporation is one of America's largest invention service companies. We can show you how your invention can be packaged and submitted to industry. So call ISC now for your free inventor's kit. For your free inventor's kit, call toll-free 1-800-356-7500. Call now and we'll rush this valuable information to you free of charge. Remember, that's 1-800-356-7500. Weekend NASCAR gives you the chance to talk with your favorite racers from Daryl Waltrip to Dale Earnhardt, Ricky Rudd to Ken Schrader. And the Winston Cup Series will be heading to Michigan International Speedway. It might be a chance for Bill Elliott to get back on track. We'll talk about it Thursday. Hope you can join us. This Weekend NASCAR, live from Brooklyn, Michigan, Thursday night at 11 Eastern on Prime Network. Prime Network's presentation of Arena Football is brought to you by Little Caesars. Two great pizzas, one low price, always, always. By Spalding, official supplier of the Ironman football. By Bike, advanced technology serving athletes worldwide. And by Max Pro, the fastest growing brand of helmets in America. Thumbs up for Drew Pearson and the Dallas Texans as they leave a 30 to 27 victor over the Denver Dynamite here in Arena Football on Prime Network. Bill Land and Tony Hill back with you to wrap it up. Denver got too big a hole. Tony got down 20 zip and just couldn't climb out. Well, I think Denver did a great job to come back. I think you summarized it pretty well. Denver got down early. They had an opportunity to score. They lost a big play down on the other end. You look, here you look at a score of three points. They would have scored when Schutz fumbled the ball. A big opportunity. I think it was a real good game, uh, plenty of action, and I'm sure the fans got everything they wanted out of this game. We've got the Little Caesars player of the game. It is Jeff Jenkins for the winning Texans. Two interceptions for Jenkins tonight. He also had a pair of catches for 21 yards. And uh, both interceptions, of course, there's never a bad interception, but they came at great times for Dallas. Oh, big plays, big plays. Jenkins 
Jenkins makes a great play right here. Great hands. Shows like hands of a receiver um, playing defensive back. Makes a good move and gets some good field position. Denver was on the move at that point in time, and, and that was a big play for him at that present moment. Tonight's Little Caesars player of the game, Jeff Jenkins, and Little Caesars, two great piece pizzas, one low price, always, always. The Iron Man of the game goes to Gary Coster with five tackles. He had two block passes, and those came at big times for Dallas, and a fumble recovery. Also managed to grab two for 18 yards and uh, had a touchdown for 12 yards on a reception. Yeah, I think Coster had a great game. He had a tremendous impact in this game. He was on hold the whole game. He made big plays. He came from everywhere. He made a great catch for a touchdown on a tight end touchdown. Uh, I have to say that he was definitely our Iron Man of the Week for this particular game. Final score again. Dallas winning 30 to 27 over the Denver Dynamite as the Texans go on the road to Tampa next week and Denver also on the road at New Orleans. Now our next telecast don't forget coming your way on Prime Network next week. We saw Detroit and Orlando a week ago in Detroit. Well let's see what kind of story it'll be down in Orlando as the Predators who are 2 and 1 take on the current unbeaten drive at 2 and 0. Oh. That's next Friday night from Orlando, Florida an 8 o'clock Eastern time start check for the local listings in your area as Detroit and Orlando hook up next week on Prime Network. Again our final score here Dallas with a 30 to 27 victory. The Texans are 2 and 1. The Dynamite falling 2 1 and 2. For Tony Hill this is Bill Land. Thanks for being with us tonight. We hope you enjoyed it. Have a good evening. <laughs>